Qualcomm's next big chip, or should that be small chip for smartwatches, has now been unveiled. The terribly named W5 Plus Gen 1 has been uncovered, and it's a meaningful advancement from what has came before it. But let's explain what this means for your next Wear OS smartwatch. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So right up front, this means that Qualcomm is dropping the old naming scheme that we've come to know and love for its wearable chips. Think Wear 2100 right through to Wear 4100 Plus. Now we're getting W5 Plus, and this is generation one, so hence Gen 1. For those of you wondering, this is a four nanometer chip or used built on the four nanometer process, which is a massive quantum leap over the 12 nanometer Snapdragon Wear 4 to 100 Plus, which is the current best smartwatch chip from Qualcomm out there in the wild, but is easily surpassed by the Exynos W920 processor, or at least the 4100 is, that is currently used in the Galaxy Watch 4 series. We've had numerous false storms with Wear OS chips before, but this actually seems like a first real attempt in the last few years to make meaningful performance gains. Let's talk about the exact makeup of this chip as Qualcomm is actually not naming the foundry, but there are four A53 cores clocked at 1.7 gigahertz with dual Adreno 702 GPUs clocked at one gigahertz and nearly three times faster memory. And that is a speed boost from 750 megahertz all the way up to 2133 megahertz. In all, that's two times higher, higher performance, or at least two times higher performance has been touted, which for most of you out there who are interested in wearables, it's probably gonna be great to hear. This new wearable focused SOC allows for responsive app scrolling, smooth 1080p video playback, real-time image recognition, and even two-way video calling with dual 16 megapixel camera support on, right there on your wrist. It's actually rare that you'll find smartwatches with camera setups, so maybe this processor might actually help push this feature moving forward, and maybe we'll start to see more interesting designs with selfie cameras and outward facing cameras built in. There's also 3D watch faces, which are interesting in their own right, and they also will be map recognition and map navigation directly from within these watch faces. So we may see some really cool, interesting integrations with Google Maps and other map services out there like Waze and so on and so forth, which is something that we've never really seen before on Wear OS. The other major aspect of the W5 Plus Gen 1 processor is its actual hybrid architecture with the 22 nanometer, which is actually an improvement of the 28 nanometer architecture on the 4100 Plus, always on coprocessor, which is running a real-time OS. The QC5100 features a Cortex-M55 core, its own 2.5D GPU, U55 machine learning core, and it handles Bluetooth 5.3 connectivity directly. In addition to handling all of the sensors, things like your heart rate, accelerometer, and gyroscope, and of course the always on display, this component is now responsible for audio or music playback and delivering low power notifications right there on your wrist. As a result, the W5 Plus chip uses 30 to 60% less power than the 4100 Plus in common use case scenarios. And this includes the always on display, background notifications, Bluetooth music streaming, GPS location grabbing, uh, things like display scrolling and VOLT calling. The end result should hopefully mean vastly extended lifespans of wristwatches and wearables and less time needed in between hitting the charger at the end of each day. Besides touting a 50% longer battery life, the W5 Plus is actually physically smaller by up to 30%, or at least that's what Qualcomm is saying. So that means that it should or will allow for much thinner watch and watch face designs and even a single global LTE modem SKU and therefore more opportunities to get LTE powered wearables without having to make compromises. All in all, we've got to say it's a vastly improved wearable chip that will no doubt make a huge difference to Wear OS specifically, which is having a rebirth of sorts since Samsung rejoined the fold last year with the Galaxy Watch 4 series. It might actually also spur more OEMs out there to start offering their own Wear OS hardware too, which is gonna be great for buyers, especially now that there's a competitive off-the-shelf CPU to slap directly into your wrist wearable hardware. It's also worth noting though that Qualcomm is going to offer the W5 Gen 1, which is a slightly downplayed device which will lack the coprocessor and is available to manufacturers of wearables for the Chinese market, 
things like senior devices, kids, health and enterprise customers. Across both chips, over 25 designs are said to be in the pipeline and the W5 Plus Gen 1 is already in the mass production stage. That means we'll hopefully see wearables touting this improved processor very, very soon. And on that, Movoi is set to be the first making this Wear OS, or at least making a Wear OS device powered by the Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 later this fall. And we'll have more coverage of those devices when they are available. And we're very excited to see just what they can do. I'd love to though, to hear your thoughts on this brand new processor. Do you think this might be the chip that Wear OS has needed? or is it another false dawn? We've had a lot of those so far, haven't we? Let me know down in the comment sections below. But as always, until next time, hopefully you enjoyed this little dive into the W5 Plus Gen 1. This is Damien saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.